Hi guys, welcome to the Citizen Channel. I hope you're all staying safe and well. Please, if you are new to this channel, please push that subscribe button. We do everything city, past and present here on these little vlogs. So I do try and inform and entertain. And there's some links on screen as well for Facebook and Twitter where I do post loads of city stuff. So if you follow a friend me on there, I do check every few days and follow a friend everyone back. And if you do get a chance, please have a check out my uh, film and TV channel as well, uh, which I try and inform and entertain on there and all the latest films and TV drama here in the UK and from around the world. So if you can check that out, that will be fantastic. Anyway, hope you enjoy today's feature. Right, welcome to Match Report. As we look back and look back keenly on, uh, yeah, pardon the voice, obviously standing at South Stand singing. I thought the atmosphere was okay last night, despite what other people say, and I thought the crowd was very good. So, uh, sod them all, that's what I say. But, uh, yeah, we're going to have a look back at uh, Manchester City 6, RB Leipzig 3. Yes, an interesting game. Not the first nine-goal thriller I've seen at the Etihad, to be honest with you. Uh, will it be the last? Probably not. Uh, yeah, so September the 15th, 8pm kickoff, of course, Group A. Match day one off to a flyer, aren't we? A bit better than PSG started, but hey, that, there you go. That's another story, isn't it? Pep versus Jesse. The City lineup last night. Edison, uh, a couple of surprises. Edison, Cancelo, Diaz, Aki, Zinchenko, Rodri, KDB, Bernardo, Grealish, Torres and Mares. Yeah, I got seven, considering obviously I didn't wasn't aware of a couple of injury problems, etc. I thought I did all right with seven, to be honest with you. Uh, the subs, Carson, Slicker. I'll have to find out who Slicker is, guys. I'm sorry, I don't know too much about that young man. Uh, Walker, Sterling, Gundogan, Jesus, Ferner, Foden, Palmer and Lavia. And in charge, of course, we had Serda Gozubuk of uh, the Netherlands. His, his Lionel's Just Van Zwillen, Johan Balder. Yeah, he's bolder than me, even. Uh, the fourth official, Jeroen Manshot, uh, also from all from the Netherlands. He's VAR referee, Paul Van Buchel. He was um, involved a couple of times, wasn't he, last night? And his assistant from France, just to break up the uh, a Dutch treat, uh, Stephanie Frappa from France. Yeah, I think I've heard of her before. I don't know why, but... Uh, I'm sure, I'm sure someone will tell me. Right, onto the match report. Let's get through these goals quickly, eh? Get onto the player ratings. Uh, 16 minutes, yet yeah, 1-0. Nathan Aki, not, not many people wanted to see Nathan Aki in the city team. I think they're being very unfair on him, to be honest with you. But a, a fine header from Aki from Grealish's cross. Uh, the keeper, yeah, um, he's not a great keeper, is he? Um, he... <sighs> <laughs> uh, I think he was beaten by the strength of this, but I mean, he, he was in that 4 0 Hungary defeat of England when de England defeated Hungary, wasn't he? He's not very good, and he's played for like lower league English teams, I think, as well. But uh, the power, the power in Aki's header, you could only turn it onto the underside of the bar and it went over the line. But, uh, I'm not overly impressed on the key. We'll have a quick mention of him again later on. So 1 0 after 16 minutes. Happily 2 0, yeah, 28 minutes. Nordi Mukieli, is it? Uh, got himself a poacher's goal. Yeah, he certainly did. Sadly, it was in the wrong end, wasn't it? It was in his own net. A good quality uh, KDB cross. Not really fine. He did have time to do something with it, but I think he just panicked the poor lad. I think Grealish was behind him. A silly a city forward. I've not had much time to check back on the game now. I've got, I've got home. I'm just recording this as I've literally woke up and done a few little bits and pieces. But yeah, he had a chance to clear it, but it, it was all confused the poor lad. It was a, a good a good poacher's goal, as I said, unfortunately, in, in the wrong end. But there you go, 2 0. Comfortable, yeah, but not for long. 42 minutes, yeah, it was 2 1. Uh, City, not for the first time, uh, seemed a little bit lackluster in defending. We'd had a couple of scares at half. Uh, and good Leipzig play had City's uh, defence in sixes and sevens, and a, a cross was headed back into the danger area where a Christopher and Cuckoo, yeah, a bit of a surprise. To me, I thought it was Mr. Silva was going to cause us all the problems. He planted the ball beyond Edison, uh, but uh, I think we were sort of ball. We used to call it ball watching in the old days. I don't know if that's the, the word we use these days, but ball watching at the back, flat footed city defence, not very good. But fortunately, yeah, I think we were fortunate perhaps to go in uh, 3 1 in the lead after a VA chat. VAR check for handball. Obviously, I didn't see much at the game, even though it's at our end. I couldn't, I couldn't really see it. But uh, perhaps these aren't given in the Premier of the Army Champions League. Are they slightly different rules? I'm not too sure. I would have thought we have to stick to all the same rules. But uh, lucky, lucky in a way. But there you go. The rules are the rules. 
And what a fantastic penalty. Please, more of this from Mares. Teach the other guys how to take penalties like that. A fantastic penalty. I mean, I know he doesn't always do that, but uh, yeah, hope this is a sign of things to come on the penalty front. Well well done, Mares, for stepping up anyway. So I think we had to be happy with 3 1 at half time. I think slightly flattered City, I think. I don't think I'm being unfair there. But not long into the second half, it was 3 2, wasn't it? Again, like a like a hot knife through butter, through a warm knife through butter. Uh, uh, he got back to 3 2. I think KDB was left frowning. I think it looked as though he might have been injured at one at one stage, but he obviously carried on, so he must have been all right. Uh, Nikunku was there again to head home, wasn't he, from from uh, another player. So I can't remember the other player who crossed it, but uh, he was sort of alone, unchallenged uh, between Diaz and Aki, wasn't he? So a bit of bad marking. Diaz doesn't quite look the same without Stones or Laporte, does he? I mean, I know probably I'm, he'll shout at me for saying that, but I don't think he does. Uh, 56 minutes, yes, fortunately, we got our two-goal mark was replenished as Grealish uh, was relishing that space down the left. He gets, certainly got more space than he does in the Premier League at the moment. Uh, and he cut inside and very Sterling-esque or Mares-esque uh, curled it into that far post. Uh, Leipzig gives City far too. I mean, obviously, they were, they were moving forward. They're bound to lead gaps at the back and they give City far too much space. Uh, 73 minutes, so it was 4-3 again. Um, alarmingly, I say that old butter knife came out again, didn't it? And uh, good old Nakunku got his hat-trick. I heard a couple of guys on Twitter saying, come on, Pep, what about signing this guy on? But uh, uh, I, thought, I said I thought Silva was their danger. Man. I, uh, perhaps he was taking all the all the flack and get, leaving space for this Nakunku guy. But a great finish uh, with Edison well be. I don't think you could particularly blame Edison. It looked a bit soft, but uh, he just smacked it into that far corner, didn't he? But 75 minutes, thankfully, yeah, Cancelo took full responsibility and struck a brilliant goal from 25 yards. I mean, they're the sort of shots from distance that usually end up going over the bar, but don't they? But that was fantastic from Cancelo to make it 5-3. Surely that was the end of uh, RB Leipzig. It probably was. uh, uh, The cause wasn't helped, of course, by Angelino leaving the field for a second book of full offence. I don't know what got into a bit of a bit of a red mist. I know he's got a bit of a grudge against City and Pep, but uh, I think unfairly in my opinion he just wasn't good enough but uh, at least he was clapped off a little bit tongue-in-cheek but a little bit as in a nice way as well by the majority of the City fans as, as he as he strolled off the pitch so all credit to City fans and unlucky Angelino of course 85 minutes of finish finally the last of the nine goals are 6-3 after a VAR check so we had to wait a minute or two in the ground we had no idea whether there was any possibility of it being uh, called off for offside, but uh, a bit of pinball in the box and Jesus, uh, a good number nine's goal, wasn't it? Let's face it, uh, to finish off the score in 6 3 because, of course, the goal was allowed to stay. Uh, job done, uh, but not as easily as a th- perhaps a three goal margin implies. So that takes us to the player ratings. Let me know yours, please, if you get a chance. That'd be brilliant. For the evening news, we've got Stuart Brennan. My starting score is six and a half. So if they did better, they'll get more. If they did worse, they'll get less. And if they had a good standard game, they'll get a six and a half from me. So, as I say, I've had a quick flick through some of the highlights this morning. I've not had a chance to re-watch the whole game. And being stood in the South Stand, you don't get a full a full analysis, you know, a full look at all the game. But I've had a look at some reports and check with Stuart Brennan and what he's been doing and stuff. So uh, I've come up with reasonable uh, scores, I think. But uh, my apologies if you think I'm way out on this. But it is quite difficult when you attend the games and you... You don't get an overall view, but uh, I think I'm fairly safe with these today. Right, Edison. Stuart Brennan says, no chance with Leipzig's goals in his 50th Champions League appearance. Well done, Edison, and had little else to do. So he's given him a six. Yeah, I'll have to give him the six and a half. I'll have to give him a standard, uh, as I say, perhaps that third one. I don't know, but I, I can't I can't lock him down, can I, really? Xiao Cancel drove hard down the vulnerable Leipzig left flank and scored a blind. He certainly did. She was only giving him a seven, though. Uh, yeah, I'm going to give him a seven and a half. I and mean, he's always going to be better going forward, isn't he? Perhaps, you know, but uh, obviously I was surprised Walker didn't play, but he got a little rest. Uh, I thought he would have got a rest for Southampton, to be honest with you, but uh, that just shows how much Pep respects Southampton, I think. But, uh, yeah. I'll give him a seven and a half. She was giving him a seven, Joe Cancelo. I thought he was always better going forward, but hey, we know, we know, don't we? We know what we're getting, don't we? Uh, Ruben Diaz, Stewart says his passage to the unmarked Grealish shall become a feature for City, defending not great. Yeah, uh, this is it. As I said, I think he does play a little bit better with someone better beside him. Uh, <clears throat> 
Excuse me. It's as simple as that. So uh, Stuart's given him a six. Yes, I've, I've only given him a six. He was part of two or three of the goals. He looks as flat-footed as everyone else. And I love Diaz like like every City player I love. But uh, I thought it just wasn't quite at it last night with his new centre-half partnership. And that brings us on to Nathan Aki. Stuart said a thumping header to get his Champions League goals account underway. Yes, his debut as well, wasn't it, for Champions League? But defensive wobble, yeah, it was. Was it his debut for Champions League? <laughs> Must have been. Anyway, I don't. I can't remember now. But no, he's been there a season. Him surely he played last year. My apologies. Forget it. Forget it. I didn't say anything. Uh, Stuart Brennan's given him a six. I'm giving six and a half. I mean, I think he's equally culpable as Diaz in defence, but I think the fact he scored a goal, I'm just going to give him half a point extra. So I'll, I'll give him a six point five, which is ends up to the standard. But uh, and again, he's not had much practice, has he? Let's be honest about it. Zinchenko Stewart says occasionally shows his defensive rawness as he did for a couple of likes in goals. He's given a five. I mean, that's a bit all right. He's come back in, and at the end of the day, he can only mark a play on what he does, but. Uh, I give him a six. I'm not going to give him the standard, but uh, a very quiet one for Zinchenko. Uh, very rusty, I thought. Zinchenko matched his air, didn't it, last night? Uh, Rodri Stewart says another understated effective display at the base of midfield. He simply enables the others to eat magic. Yeah, so seriously, give him a seven. Yeah, um, I'm giving him a six point five. He just doesn't do what Ferner does, does he? And he never, he never will, unfortunately. But he did his best, and I did notice him a few times. Uh, so I'm going to give him the standard. I'm not going to go mad, but to say should give him a seven. I'll give him a six and a half. Perhaps I'm being a bit mean. Perhaps I could have given him more, but. Uh, there you go. Rodri was OK. Bernardo buzzed and bounced around the fringes of the def Leipzig defence in the support role to good with De Bruyne. Yes, give him a seven. I'll give him a seven. I know you can just give him a standard, actually. I don't think he did anything brilliant, but he was as busy as ever. He was always an outlet, as he always is. So I'll agree with Stuart and give him a seven. KDB, Stuart says, pure quality from the office. Cross to force and on goal was also magical. Well, almost magical. Yeah, it, was, it was a good cross. It was a good cross. Uh, I wouldn't say it was almost magical. Good cross. And I say the defender had time to do better, and he didn't. He just panicked. Uh, so just give him a nine, Stuart. I'm not going to get over the top with uh, KDB. I thought it was a very, very good return, considering he's not had much match, uh, match uh, minutes behind him. So I'll give him an eight. I mean, that's one of my, that's my joint highest score today. So I am going to give him an eight, but uh, I'm not going over the top. But Kev, I expect, I expect more from our Kevin. Uh, Rightly or wrongly. Uh, Riyad Mahrez, Stewart says, emphatic from the penalty spot, but didn't give Angelino too hard a time. Earned a balling out by Pep. Yeah, I saw that. I'd love to know. Lip read to see what's going on. Uh, Stewart's given a six. Uh, I'm going to give him a six and a half. I did forget he was on the pitch for most of the time, and I was looking around thinking, has Mahrez gone off or, or whatever? Uh, but a great penalty. So I'm going to give him the standard purely because he scored that wonderful penalty. I'll, I'll give him that. Uh, Torres Stewart said good runs and drop deep to create space for others on selfish stuff from the space that yeah Stewart's given a seven uh, I've got to give him a six and a half uh, I can't give him more than a standard I thought it was okay I noticed him uh, a few times but uh, uh, not perhaps where he should be doing it but uh, he put the effort in so six and a half from me a seven from Stewart Jack Grealish uh, Stewart says fabulous finish for his first Champions League goal and he had deserved it uh, he's given an eight yeah I enjoyed a lot of space a lot more space than he'd probably get in the Premier League because of the way like Leipzig played uh, and he did fine with it he was fine with it so yeah I've got to give him an 8 as well so I can't disagree with Stuart Fernandino for Rodri on 58 minutes steady the ship Stuart, Stuart just give him a 6 I mean actually I, I say I usually give subs a standard if they've gone for about 30 minutes or so but uh, I'd give him a 7 I thought he made a big difference I know they still, still scored a goal while he was on the pitch but you could just tell that little bit of difference that little bit of quality uh, for that last 30 so I'd give him a 7 Fernandino and the last subs we're going to mark is Ilkay Gundogan for Bernardo on 58. Helped close the game out, he did. So that's what he was there to do. Stuart give him a 6. I'm going to give him a steady 6.5, of course. I can't do him less than that. Other substitutes, of course, that we didn't mark. Phil Foden came on for De Bruyne on 71 minutes. Great great to see him back. Raheem Sterling came on for Torres on 71. Uh, did he touch it? I'm not too sure. Uh, Gabby Jesus for Grealish 81. No time to mark, but it's a shame, isn't it? If you score a goal, you should get a mark, shouldn't you? I should have given him a seven, really. But uh, no, I can't, I can't, we can't break the rules, can we? City man in the match. Well, I think KDB probably, but but I don't think Kevin will mind if I give it if we give it another guy. I mean, I, I marked them both the same marks. Uh, I think it's obviously something he's dreamed of and looked forward to for a long, long time. And all credit to him. He's, he's a, he seems a nice lad. I, I'm not, I wasn't his biggest fan before he came to City, but uh, he's sort of grown on me. And he's there on screen. He's there with his ratings. But uh, yeah, I'm going to give uh, City man of the match to 
Jack Grealish, although perhaps he wasn't overall uh, with people like KDB on the pitch, but I am going to do that. I hope, I'm sure you won't mind, and I hope uh, Kev doesn't mind if I give it to Jack and uh, let me know what you think. Am I being fair there? Am I being too nice? Uh, who knows? Anyway, overall record against German teams now. We've played 14, won 11, drawn two and lost one. So that's not bad, is it? The old Germans are city tearing Germans apart again. Yep, Leipzig going forward. Well, in a similar way to their 4-1 loss to Bayern at the weekend, uh, a similar three-goal margin, of course. I think that defeat flattered the, uh, their opponents, as in Bayern and us, uh, a little bit. I thought they had a go, which is great. It's great to see uh, uh, some people were talking about and putting a 10 men behind the ball. I never never understood where people were getting that from because I've, it's not the way RB Leipzig I'm aware of and seen and heard and read about, to be honest with you. But uh, they do have problems in defence and I think it all stems from that goalkeeper, to be honest with you. I don't think he inspires his defence, the guys in front of him in the same way. You know, I used to have a pop at Bravo for, for you know, obviously undermining City's defence when he was behind it. But... Uh, he isn't very good, and that probably doesn't help. So that, that's a big weakness from. I think they have to improve the goalkeeper. I know he's an international place for Hungary, but that, you know, he's awful for Hungary, wasn't he? Let's be honest about it. Offensively, though, they are excellent. Uh, they've got a great squad. The midfield is fine. Uh, they get that ball. They, they pinball it about. They get numbers in the box, but uh, they have to learn the difference between attacking and making sure they've got a bit like City in a way. Uh, can defend properly, uh, and they leave that time and space for other teams like City, the good teams. Uh, they're going to get punished, which they did six times last night, and they got punished four times by Bayern Munich the other day, even though they did have a uh, quite a lot of the ball at the game as well. They do need to start winning the Bundesliga. They've only won one game out of four. Uh, but they've got too good a squad, I think. And I think the manager will settle in. And I think they'll start moving up that Bundesliga. I think they'll be in a far better position by the time we play our second game with them anyway. So, yeah, I'm not there. Uh, I think they'll be OK, as I say. Struggling a bit at the moment. I'm sure, I'm sure they'll be OK. Uh, City, yeah, defensively we're not great, were we? Uh, obvious reasons, as Pep was forced to make some changes, obviously with Aki and Zinchenko coming back in. Uh, the last match time between them. And Aki Diaz centre half partnership obviously well down the pecking order of preferred partnerships, isn't it? Let's be honest about it. We did look a little flat footed at times, and as I said, I think I said in the match report, ball watching we used to call it when I used to play football at the back. Uh, and admittedly, RB are a very good team, but uh, we'll. We will play far better teams than RB, especially in the Champions League. And there's three or four, perhaps in the Premier League, that have, uh, can do the stuff that RB did and a lot better as well. I think we got sucked in again, and it's happened before, hasn't it? Uh, quite a free-flowing game. <laughs> this has happened. This has tested us, hasn't it, over the years? Uh, I can think of Monaco, perhaps, or the Spurs game, if you like, in, in the Champions League. Uh, it's great to watch, but we do get sucked into that uh, up and down, and we, we do look suspect at the back, which isn't great on the old heart. Fantastic for the neutral, uh, no problem there, but not great on the heart if, you, if you're a supporter of City or whoever it is. I mean, it's just... Uh, not great, is it? And I think, I say, we did get sort of cursed into that free-flowing game with RB Leipzig because all credit to them, they, they did have a go and that's that's what happens with City. And we, we, it's like a nip and tuck and end-to-end, -end, isn't it? And uh, as I say, I think I said before, the three-goal margin, a little bit flattering for us, to be honest with you. And if they stayed with 11 men on the pitch, who knows? You know, it could have still been closer again. But a first tricky game out of the way. On paper, a comfortable win, although although for about 75 minutes it felt anything but comfortable, didn't it? But there you go. Roll on PSG. Let's see, let's see how that goes. So there we go. Thanks, thanks for joining me for this little match report today. Let me know your thoughts, player ratings, any thoughts you've got, and give us your support. It's always appreciated. Give us all thumbs ups and uh, please coming out this week. Don't forget we've got all the build up to the Southampton game, the Saints. Uh, not long now, only a couple of days away as I'm doing this. It, these games come thick and fast, don't they? Uh, so please check out my odd show, my Southampton odd show, some value and some, some reasoning behind it. It's not just basic uh, betting stats. It's uh, uh, ideas of why I think certain things are value or not value, etc. So please, please check that out because it's not just a, a straightforward thing. Uh, I don't ever condone gambling. Don't forget, please, not when the fun stop, stop, etc. And please check out my history boys feature. Yeah, I love doing these little history boys features. Again, I was back. It's uh, when Lonnie McMenemy's Southampton visited uh, Main Road in 1979. So I was there. I was obviously there at that one. Uh, and of course, please check out very soon, as you you know, it may even be out now as you're watching this, depending when you're watching this, uh, my full match preview of the game against Southampton.
Anyway, thanks for watching. Sorry about the voice, but that's a that's that singing, that's that singing and shouting that old South Stand say. A lot of young lads around me last night as well. A lot of odd new faces which you tend to get in the Champions League game. I felt a bit old last night. There's a lot of uh, teenagers, early twenties lads, which uh, obviously is it's nice to see, but it makes it makes me feel very old these days. But that's it. I'll keep there shouting, and I certainly shouted just as loud as any of them. So, and I stood up there and sang my heart out for the. 90 minutes or so was uh, as best we could anyway thanks for watching what are we going to do the rest of the day have a great one look after yourselves look after your friends look after your families more importantly let's all look after each other till we meet here again on the citizen channel or perhaps you have a flit across have a look at my film and tv channel if you get a chance have a uh I try and inform and entertain on there and uh, please check that out but until we do until we meet again i only ask you one thing don't i guys please stay safe blues come on city thanks for watching bye for now